What's going on, people? So if you've been following along with me on like the Instagram or whatever, that's where you've been seeing a lot of my actual pickups lately because I get them in and do the unboxings over there, talk about some stuff or whatever, hang out with some people. And then I come over here and do like the review or whatever, right? That's just kind of what I've been doing lately so I can get these boxes opened up or whatever because I've been kind of not really living the YouTube life lately. So now that I'm back, now you're, you guys out there that only watch the YouTube side of things are going to start to see the crap that I've been picking up. So this right here is one of those, you know, earth friendly shoes or whatever, as you can tell by the box, as you can tell along the side of there, right? This is going to be an Air Max 2021 in whatever color. It's like, what did they say? Ghost Obsidian? Yeah. Ash Slate, something like that. So Nike sent out an email like last week and they're like, hey, you have, you're a Nike member, right? They try to make it sound like you're something special, but it's like, that's anybody that's bought anything is like a Nike member. Like, hey, you're a Nike member, so you've got early access to these shoes. It's like, it's a general release that's out there for everybody. Stop trying to make it more than it is, right? But either way, it was the Air Max 2021 and they're like, hey, you want to buy these? Like they're here right now, go ahead and sign in and you can get a pair. And I was like, sure. Why not? You know, you could have skipped all that front end stuff and just said, hey, click here to buy the Air Max 2021. That would have been perfectly fine with me. I don't know, man. Mac is weird like that. There was a time they would give me actual early access to things, but uh, I think the last time was like a pair of Altitude Jordan 13s or something like that. Like, uh, not exaggerating. I honestly think that might be the last one. So anyways, <clears throat> but getting back on track here, this is what we're here to talk about though, actually. So got these out of the box once again, cause that's where they've been hanging out. And now it's time to talk about this right here, which as I said, is the Air Max 2021 in ashen slate and ghost gray or something like that. I honestly don't remember. But it's a pretty decent looking shoe, right? But to just say it's a pretty decent looking shoe does absolutely nothing for you, right? I know different people do different reviews or whatever. And so some people might just say just that, show you a picture or two and then tell you you should buy it. We're gonna take things a little bit differently over here. We're gonna give you a little breakdown, right? And we're gonna start that breakdown with the bottom. Down there across the bottom, what you're looking at is pretty much likely to be your standard outsole on these, right? There's nothing to, Nothing at all fancy about it. You got a little bit of that crater type style going on towards the back. You got just some black type thing going on in the front. And then you've got air in the middle and you've got air max in the other section. Well, I say air in the middle of like the crater area. Anyways, let's move on up here to this midsole, right? Because that's actually something we're talking about. Now in the front area, you've got all this foam type stuff going on. I'm not sure exactly what the material is. It feels almost like the newer boost, like the 19, well, more like the 1920 boost, I can say for sure. Maybe the 21, I think that's the same. And then moving back past that, this is the real deal here. You got this big old bubble thing, it looks like a teething ring. Like if you have kids or have seen kids before, like if they're babies, it's one of those things, right? You probably know. Either way, you got this thing going on. This is a pretty large bubble here. And this bubble is gonna be in some kind of greenish sort of color. And as you look in there, like what they sell this as is one of their dual pressure bubbles. So I think that's why it's constructed the way that it is, because it looks like there's a back section of it, then it kind of thins out, then there's the front section. So maybe that's where like the dual pressure comes in. I'm honestly not sure. They didn't have a whole lot of information on the website. So I'm just going to pass that on as I saw it, which is that it's a dual pressure bubble. And I'm going to give you my best guess. But then past that, looking down in there, and you I have to get you in there from some different angles because you can kind of see that the bubble isn't, it looks like it's not attached. It's almost as if somebody just slipped it, slipped it in there. Like they saw this gap and like, oh, let's put some, some bubble in here and call it a day, right? So that's how that looks, at least to me. It has a very cheap look, but it doesn't have a cheap feel. So hopefully if you were thinking the same thing, now you don't. And then around that you can kind of tell there's a bunch of this plastic piece here right and then you'll see what that looks like more so in the on foot as far as like when you apply pressure but just know that like these oh, flat type pieces or whatever whatever you want to call that it's a, it's, it's a very simple plastic nothing crazy about it very flexible and all that stuff all around so 
there's no stiffness or whatever there, which is probably where this where the comfort comes in. And then on the back end, well, on the back inside end, you do have Air Max right there in the same way you had it on the outsole. And then on the outside, you have the Nike swoosh over here, right? But yeah, all in all, that's kind of what's going on down here. So hopefully you got some good views of that and now I can move on. And then right above that, you do have this purple to gray gradient thing going on as far as like between the actual upper of the shoe and the lower part of the shoe. Certain things like the Vapor Maxes don't have that. So in those cases, then you're just kind of walking right on the bubbles. This time, I think it's probably for a good reason that they have a little split layer in there, just kind of just to kind of split things up a little bit. Now that we've spent more than enough time, at least I feel like, on the mid section and all this, mid sole section, let's go ahead and talk about this upper because the upper is also something that matters, right? Because I mean, you can't just have the mid sole, right? I, I don't think that works. So looking at this, right? You, you've probably taken a look or two at like a picture that I've put up or maybe you just kind of see that from the videos, but there isn't a whole lot going on but once you start getting in here close, then you can kind of see, well, okay, I guess there's a little bit here and there. So down here around the toe box area, right? One thing that is kind of weird, you've got these like, it feels like these rubber plastic dots or whatever that they have going on. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. I'm not like thrilled about it, but I don't hate it. So I don't know, man. It's almost like indifference, but I lean more, slightly more towards not liking it. Anyway, so you got that, and it kind of dips back to right here, just past that swoosh, right? And then outside of that, the rest of the toe box area, it's made out of this meshy type feel, which kind of reminds me of like the Vapor Max 2019s, like, you know, where they have like those, it's almost like it's water resistant type materials. It kind of feels like a plasticky mesh. You got that thing all across the upper. And as you saw, this is one of those like recycled material shoes. So that is a recycled type material there. And if I forget to mention it, it is a little restrictive in some ways when you actually wear the shoe. So unlike like your typical prime knitter, excuse me, fly knitter, whatever, this, you're not going to have the same mobility that you might be used to with other Air Maxes. So that's just something to think about. Or even with like the 90s and things that have like the mesh, this, it's a little different. And then down in there, you've got this kind of a design going on. You can see it's got like some grids and some circles or whatever. Almost looks like it might be like some kind of, what do you call it, like a blueprint to something. And if it is, and no, somebody knows what it goes to, feel free to comment down, that down below. I'm just telling you what I see. And then moving back just a little bit here, you've got this little plastic piece overlaying on the upper, on the outside in purple. And then that's somewhat similar in a way, at least in shape, to what you see on the inside, which is this leather type thing going on that says Nike Air. It's got some little preparations in there, which don't really go through this shoe, so I'm not sure what the deal is. I mean, you can kind of see it. Actually, no, you can't. That's just a, another piece of the shoe. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, if it looks like it's pretty much just for design, but you have that going on. And then every so often you see some purple stitching and whatnot. But moving back over to where we were, not getting too distracted, you got the swoosh in here, which is kind of like the same sort of material as what this almost feels like, but this feels a little rougher. And then behind that, more of that mesh type stuff with more of that graphic design that they had. And then there's some of that purple stitching that I was talking about, a little bit more of that same sort of plasticky overlay from the front. And then you get into like a more simple material, but this is it feels kind of like nylon almost, but very stiff. Not, I don't want to say stiff, but it feels thick and plush, you know, but at the same time, not as like soft to the touch, right? So it's kind of weird to describe, but it also in a way reminds me of the back end of the Adidas 4D Run 1.0. So I know that's kind of an obscure comparison and because I don't think many people bought those, but if you have a pair, there you go. So anyways, you got that going on. It's sort of a light gray, purplish sort of thing. And then switching all the way to the back, you've got this here pull tab. So that's kind of in like a bluish sort of color. It's a weird kind of shade to it. And then just under that, you've got the heel cup area, which feels very strange to me. I'm not even sure how to exactly describe that. It's It has like a very pl plasticky feel to it. 
and I can't think of what I saw this on recently, but if it comes up later between now and like me publishing the video, maybe I'll have to put some words at the bottom of the screen. Anyways, so there's that for you, right? And I think I kind of glossed over, but over here on the inside, this piece, it, it's not like it's like great leather or anything. I think it's like one of those synthetic things and it's not crazy stiff or anything. It feels fine, you know? It's thin and everything, so it's not gonna obstruct the way you move in the shoe. It's just a weird design, in my personal opinion. But I think that's about it for most of the outside, except for this here on behind that. So the mesh that you see here is kind of similar to the mesh that you see on the tongue, right? And it is pretty nice as far as the comfort goes, and it plays into why these do feel pretty comfortable, but I'll talk about that when I wear them and stuff. But yeah, so hopefully it leads to some good breathability too. I believe that's what it is, at least from how I felt wearing them. But it does, at the very least, give you a nice plush feel. So I do like that. Kind of reminds me of like those ZX-8000s or something, like the Aqua ones that I had, or the Mose, Flame Flaming Mose ones. Anyways, over here to the tongue, right? The tongue kind of has that same sort of thing going on. It's fairly thin, but it's, it feels pretty nice like to the touch when you're actually wearing it and stuff. So that's a good thing. And then at the very top, you have a little bit of that stitching in like a neon green sort of color, which is also the same that you see down at the very bottom. Otherwise, it's pretty much just your standard stuff that you've seen on a lot of things, so nothing too special about it. And in front of that, the lacing that you have, I'm pretty sure it's 3M. It looks, these look like they're the 3M's little bits that they put in there, whatever you wanna call them. The one thing that I don't quite like is this strip that they have going down the middle of the lacing area i don't get it it just doesn't seem like there's a reason for it to be there unless they just kind of wanted to make the middle look kind of like the outsides because as you see on the outsides where the like the lacing kind of is just outside of it they have these layers right which are kind of like what you would see on like an element 87 or like a 270 react they have these layers here in this case they don't do anything they're just there right and I don't even like them personally, so I would kind of rather them not be there or at least be done differently, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna hold it against them. So you got that in that sort of lightish purple color and you got some gray lace hole type things on there. So I guess if you wanted to kind of switch up how the shoes are laced, you could, but at the same time, it's just an odd choice to me. And here on the outside and on the inside, you do have a little bit of extra of that lime green, neon green stitching going on. And the purple pieces that actually hold the laces comes out just a little bit further. So I don't know that this is enough to really get the laces through there because it looks a little smaller, but it might be. So again, if you want to switch up how you do your lacing or whatever, you can probably. I don't because I just, I don't care to, I'm kind of lazy. But just know that there's a lot of stuff happening in here. So it might lead to some ways to be creative with how you lace your shoes. That's the long or the short version of that. Moving on to the inside, because we feel, I feel like we've talked a lot about everything else and I feel like you get it after seeing enough pictures. So down there on the inside, what you're looking at on the insole is, well, for one, there's a sticker in here that says upper contains synthetic leather. You can take that out. But for one, what you're looking at down in there is the pinwheel Nike swoosh thing. I forget who pointed that out to me. It was either Wade County or it might've been Kyle. I think it was Wade though. Cause I had heard that term before. Maybe I've even used it, but it's been a long time. So I kind of forgot it, but some, but he pointed it out. So you got that black midsole, nothing too fancy about it. Take this paper out so you can get you a good look down in there. What you see basically around the back of the sock liner where your heel is, is what you're going to see through the rest of the shoe. So nothing crazy about it, you know, nothing fancy down in there, not whatsoever. But again, a lot of these materials do feel pretty plush, so I like that about it. Now, outside of that, I feel like we've covered everything as far as like the visual goes. So I'm gonna hit you with some personal thoughts and then we'll ride on into the sizing thing, right? These shoes right here set me back, well, I had some kind of coupon thing or something that's why I didn't mind buying them when I bought them. But the retail is like 160 or something, right? So when you look at that, you think, okay, well, hopefully I get something decent for the price. And in my opinion, you do, right? You get some pretty decent materials and all that good stuff. I mean, some of them are questionable. And then you get this new construction on the, 
on the bubble and all that. And given that they gave you that without giving you like a premium price, that's kind of a plus to me. So past that, what it comes down to is the visual. The visual is weird. I mean, it, you get used to it the longer you look at it. But I think what it's going to take for me to fully get on board with these is a colorway that I'm super into. This one I'm not opposed to, though I did not look at it closely. I thought it was going to be more of like a just gray and black and something like that. I don't know. I, I, was in a, maybe I wasn't in a rush. I just wasn't paying attention. But as it looks now, it actually looks better than I expected it to, but still not like a color I'd run out and get. The thing is, I just like to know what stuff is like. So if I do decide to buy a pair later, when they make a really nice color, I'll know what I'm getting into. So long story short, again, I'm cool with the way these look, how they came out and all that good stuff. So no complaints here, none whatsoever. Even the price is like mildly justified. So yeah, I, I can't complain really, other than these little flappy things, but that's, you know, personal opinion, right? Anyways. Past that, the other thing that matters, well, I won't say the other thing because I don't think my opinion really matters a whole lot as far as what I think. If it does, let me know because I'm curious. But the sizing, the comfort and stuff, I feel like my opinion there might matter just a little bit. So we're going to talk about that so we can get this video finished up. I bought these in a 9.5 because that's the size I buy in like all my Air Maxes, right? And I gotta say, it's working out pretty good. So. The thing about them though, one thing that is kind of weird is like, you do, I do feel like they're a little more roomy in some ways than some other Air Maxes of the same size. Not enough to like change your sizing on them. It just feels like there's a little more wiggle room in the toe box or whatever. But the thing that you, the reason you kind of want that in a way is because when you're wearing these, because that big old bubble back there, it kind of makes you feel like you're a little higher and a slight lean forward, not as crazy as like the 720s and stuff but you do feel just a little bit so it's kind of nice to have the feeling of a little bit of extra room in there otherwise they would feel small but I feel like going up half a size or anything or even going down I feel like that's not a ideal but if I did have to you know I just, let's say if you had to go up or down because your size wasn't available probably going up would be the way to go but it's kind of hard to make that call right now because I've only worn them so much, you know? So I'm just gonna say that while they're readily available, just go true to size and go with it. Otherwise, do what you would do in any other Air Max when your other sizes aren't available. Now, past that, right? As I was kind of alluding to, the upper here, like down here in the toe box area, you don't have a lot of mobility in, the, in your toe area. Like if you like to stretch, move your toes around in the same way that you would in like a socks, fitting type shoe because this is a fairly restrictive upper, right? It's not all knitted like other shoes. So that isn't great, which is kind of what leads me to think like going up might be the better thing. But anyways, just know that this down here, it feels fine. You're just going to feel a little more locked in than you might be used to with Air Maxis. So there's that. But overall, comfort-wise, like the upper, it's got some very plush materials in it, so I, I do like that. It doesn't feel like hot or anything, so I, I walked around in these for a little bit. It's only indoors, but still, like it felt really good on the upper all around. The midsole here, which is probably what you really want to know about, this bubble feels pretty good. I'm not a huge fan of how it makes you feel like a little taller and with that extra lean in there, but that's probably just something you get used to over time, but I can't argue with the way they did the comfort on here. This dual pressure bubble thing that they're talking about, that is working out pretty well. So there's that. I'll have to do a follow-up at some point or whatever. Maybe I'll just like leave a comment in another month or something and just kind of pin that so you can see what I think later. But right now, all things are looking pretty good. And that foam that they put in the front end, yeah, all throughout, this is a very comfortable shoe. So it's definitely something to consider if the price is where you want it to be. Because again, retail on things can be a little high and stuff like this tends to not sell out. So I wouldn't jump on them right now, regardless of how you feel. But I think that about covers up everything, right? I mean, true to size fit, really comfortable. That's the short version for anybody who missed it. So yeah, we're gonna move on. 
And now that we've done all that stuff, I don't think there's anything I forgot to say. I don't think there's any comparisons that I wanted to make and did not. So we're just gonna sit here part ways and call it a day. From me to you, have a nice rest of your day or rest of your night, whatever it is, wherever you are. Very much daytime here, you can probably tell that. I am going to do the on feet for these and take some pictures and likely get this video out today. I've got several hours and I should be able to pull that off because I, I live alone and I don't really have anything else going on. So I can work uninterrupted, which is fantastic. Later, people.